Good morning. Mm. Yesterday, when I finished the video, I promised a part two. And I'm going to deliver on that. Today's title is Ninth Wave, Natural Law and Civil Disobedience. In the Martin Luther King Jr. quote used in yesterday's message, he mentioned individuals that break laws conscience tells them are unjust. In reality, they are expressing the highest respect for the law. I realized when I finished the video then that I had not addressed that point, which is very important. In the awakening, we are not looking to create anarchy. Rather, we are creating order based on truth. I'm very aware of what's happening across the planet as people awaken. In the dream that I was having, it seemed like throughout the night, I kept opening this box that had been sealed off, but I was opening the box. And inside there were these pieces, em embers. They looked, when, it, when you first opened the box, they looked like they were, there was no fire in them. It just looked like, it just looked like dry stuff in the box. And yet, when I would blow on them, they would, you could see the, 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 the burning, the fire inside the embers. It would come alive, and if you blew hard enough, it would burst into flames. And as I meditated on that, I realized that humanity is like those embers that looked like it had gone out. It looked like the, the flame of freedom had, had burned out. And yet, there is a divine breath that's being blown across the planet on humanity. And the embers are starting to glow, and in some cases, burst into flame. And I saw that, and I think it's significant, in the spiritual context of what's happening in the world today. As I said, as Martin Luther King indicated, it's not, civil disobedience is not a disrespect for the law. It's a disrespect for unjust laws and the law of the jungle or the law of tyrants. But it is a great respect actually for natural law, which operates not just on truth, but on love. As I prepared my, as I began preparing, my response to the Court of Appeal, I realized, well, I actually realized it before I started, started preparing it, but I'm realizing that what the lawyer and the banks are doing, the bank representing the lawyer, what they're doing is they're focusing on rules and ordinances and all sorts of things that, that, we, that they would like to call law but they're actually the law of tyrants. They're, they're the law and the rules of people that want to control other people and actually defraud other people of what is naturally and rightfully theirs by creation. And they do that by creating this maze of, again, what they call laws, but are actually rules and ordinances and and order and and orders and uh, oh I don't know there's a whole bunch of terms that you can use and they're not all coming to my mind right at this moment but they use these actually to keep people in their place and to disqualify people from having justice real justice served remember real justice is always based on truth Truth is the cornerstone of justice. When you don't have truth operating, 
There can be no justice, only injustice. And we, the people, are beginning to realize that in greater and greater numbers. What I'm realizing is not just me alone. Many people are waking up to this reality that the world we live in is filled with the, with the rules and the laws of tyrants attempting to control us and keep us in that box where our lights appear to go out. But our lights aren't out. The lights can never be put out. And by divine breath breathing into the dust, man becomes a living soul again. And when I say man, I mean mankind. That includes women and men. It's not gender specific. It's, it's gender inclusive. And we become living souls awakened to the natural law that works from love. Because we are love. Because that is our natural tendency, is to help each other. When people are down, to, to show empathy and compassion. Those that are unable to do that, many of whom have risen to power in, in the world that is, di that is dying, that is being replaced by a new world order of love, they're not able to show the natural empathy or compassion for whatever reason. They seem incapable. And I say they because we have been incapable of showing that natural compassion and empathy when we were asleep and when we were caught up in the illusion of separation. When we were caught up in thinking that I am me and they are them and we are not one, we can't be one because they are evil and I am good or they are different than I am. Just simply, they are different. And when we have operated from that, it appears on the surface that the divine spark has been extinguished. And that was the goal of the tyrannical plan for a new world order, the conspiracy to create a new world order of a combat boot on the human face forever and ever, subjecting humanity to slavery however, whatever form it might take. But Martin Luther King had foresight enough to recognize something really, really important as he led the demonstrations in the, in the 60s. And as, as the conscience of a nation was awakened to restore civil rights to everyone. Now they fell short because civil rights are still not fully restored. But it was the beginning, it was the awakening of that ember was beginning to burst into flame. And people from all races, all across the country, were standing up progressively against the old ways. The conservatives, of course, were not involved. It was the liberals. And liberalism is where we have to go, folks. There's this false paradigm of conservative versus liberal that is insane. When, in, when conservatism is only trying to maintain the status quo, it means let the tyrants get, keep getting away with their BS, keep getting away with their fraud, keep getting away with their violence and their greed. That is not conservatism. That is, that is anarchy with a cloak on because it's law of the jungle. It's the law of the survival of the fittest. Whoever can steal the most from the most people wins. And it is theft of rights through maintenance of ignorance. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is the world that we've lived in, which has produced such gross injustice, beginning with the financial realm, but because it's because the finances are such a significant part of the way human society is conducted, it is the prison without bars that has been constructed, keeping us less than. And as the breath of God blows over our embers, the embers of our human soul, and we begin to, to have the flame of freedom 
start to burn within us once again, we realize that the natural way of things is for peace, not war. It's for love, not selfishness and greed. This is the natural order of things, the way it was intended from the beginning of creation. This has always been the destiny of the evolution of human consciousness, to awaken to the golden age once again. And there are many fear mongers out there, many fear mongers. I watched a almost, it, might have, it was over an hour actually, I think, video yesterday of, a, of an Australian man. It was well done, what, 2012, what they don't want you to know or something like that. I don't have the exact title in front of me. And he was correct that, that the system has tried to get us to focus on 2012 when 2011 is really when everything is happening. But he, he was talking about cataclysmic events because of Elenin. Uh, and, and, and it was fascinating. I mean, even though I felt he was fear-mongering, I was fascinated and, and, and stayed in there and watched the whole thing, avoiding doing what I was supposed to be doing yesterday at that time in the morning. And I was just postponing it. I wasn't avoiding it completely. I was just postponing it because that drew my attention. He promised, but he'd come back in part two, and talk about the spiritual solution and the spiritual perspective, which I couldn't find part two anywhere, which makes me believe that the whole thing was some type of a setup, because if they're going to talk about part two, they need to provide the part two. And I mean, maybe if not the same day, at least the next day, like I'm doing with this message. But I don't see cataclysm coming as we awaken and as the civilly obedient become aware of what their civil obedience has produced through their conservatism and trying to maintain the way things have always been. If we maintain the wing, th way things have always been, it's not peace, folks. It's not justice. It's not healthy. Everything that we long for, everything that is right and good, has been deprived from the human uh, family. We have been deprived of the, of the good and kept in the dark. But the lights are coming on and it's not the natural order of things. We have great respect for law and order when law and order are based on natural compassion and natural empathy and a, de and a sincere desire to get to the truth of things. The truth of things is from my perspective, that we can avert all the cataclysms that are predicted, or at least most of them. Now, today is a day that a big earthquake is supposed to happen according to this thing. But remember, man has the ability to create earthquakes and natural disasters on demand. We have that ability. It's been talked about and I think proven, from to my way of mind, it's been proven. So. Those that create anarchy, are, are creating anarchy and are creating fear, they have the ability to match these astrological things up with, with actual events on Earth. It's not necessarily an accident. It can be created. The point I'm making is we don't need to be in fear as we awaken. As the divine breath blows over us, the Holy Spirit fills us, we can, we can shift reality. It is not a fixed reality based on mechanical motions in the heavens or alignment of planets. Consciousness drives reality. And as we become conscious and as we embrace peace within our own being, that peace will permeate outward and change the literal events that are about to occur in this year, 2011 as we're co-creating together the new world. This is the ninth wave. This is when everything comes together and nothing is set in stone unless we choose to continue in ignorance. And I don't do that and I don't think most of you do either. So this is an invitation to understand natural law, which is unalienable rights granted by our creator, making us all equal.
This is the foundation. And I want you to understand that you and me, we are children of God. We are children of God together, co-creating 